a pretty lovely evening once again from here in Chile, and it's another very cold and freezing evening, but anyway, we welcome you with greatest of warmness. So while leaving the last session, we talked about this particular fact that when we are going to actually start and commence today's proceedings, we are going to actually talk about how the accounting pattern would unfold or what procedural methodology we shall have to adopt when purchase consideration is not given. Correct. This was the point when we left the last session. So point here is that in this particular session, obviously we are going to discuss these aspects when purchase consideration is not given. Now please pay attention over here. If purchase consideration is not given, there are three methods available to compute the purchase consideration. Please listen to me very carefully and it is very important to mind the language, mind the wordings and keep it in your mind. First of all, I am telling you that whenever purchase consideration is not given, it is of paramount importance to understand that there are three methods to compute the purchase consideration. But now what I am saying, mind it. It is not our discretion. It is not our choice that we can pick up any method according to our whims and what we call wills so that we can easily what we call solve the question. No, nothing like that. Although there are three methods available, we will have to take care of the fact in the light of the what we call directions of the question that which method we have to adopt and apply to compute the purchase consideration. Is it clear to you? So I told you that there are three methods. So when PC is not available, when purchase consideration is not available, when PC is not available, or when purchase consideration is not given, then we have the luxury of three methods, correct? Two, three methods we can compute purchase consideration. In order to compute the purchase consideration, there are three methods which have been prescribed. And one among them is known as net assets method. One is known as net assets method of computation of purchase consideration. I am simply writing net assets method. Correct? Then there is another method which is nothing but just variation of net assets method. This method, second method is known as intrinsic value of share method. Intrinsic value of share method, IVS method. And later on when we are going to discuss IVS method, I will tell you also that it is nothing but it is just a variation of extended variation of net assets method and besides that we have yet another method to compute the purchase consideration that is known as net payment method net payment method i am simply writing np net payment method so three methods have been given and i just told you a moment ago in the light of the question we shall have to discern we shall have to find out actually which method we shall have to apply to actually solve the question Obviously, first of all, we are going to take into account net assets method and I will let you know actually through this particular question how the purchase consideration is computed under net assets method. Just have a look over this one. 5.1 is the question which we are picking up. Top Limited decided to sell its business to Bottom Limited. Indirectly, it means Bottom Limited is taking over the business of Top Limited. Is it clear to you or not? Now, we look into the balance sheet and we find in the balance sheet as usual there is share capital, equity share capital which will be posted to the equity share capital account in the books of acquiry company. Besides there are reserves and surplus. Under the reserves and surplus we have only reserves 90,000. Again it will be posted to the credit side of shareholders account. Then as far as liabilities, liabilities are concerned, one is actually debenture. Another liability we have got creditors. There are two liabilities in this particular question. While doing the accounting, especially in the books of a quarry company, you have to be very careful that uh, how many liabilities are there. Now coming over to the asset side, tangible fixed asset, property, plant and equipment is given to you. Then plant and machinery is also given to you. Besides that, you have the goodwill even in this particular question. And then we have stock and we have got cash. So these are the assets which are given in the question. Is it clear to you? Now below it is given that bottom limited took over all the assets and liabilities. So purchasing company bottom limited is taking over all the assets and liabilities. But now here it is written except cash, except cash. So now we have concluded that cash hasn't been taken over. Further it is written that at their book values. That means all the so far this particular line actually forces us to conclude that all the assets which have been taken over have been taken over at book value, isn't it or not? 
However, cash is not taken over. But now the question further says that, however, goodwill was valued or goodwill was taken over at 1 lakh. So now it is given that goodwill which was appearing in the balance sheet was taken over at 1 lakh. Goodwill has been taken over at 1 lakh. And now the question further says that property also has been taken over at 1 lakh 80,000. 1 lakh 80,000. So company has taken over all the assets. Purchasing company has taken over all the assets. Except cash. All the assets have been taken over. But now we can say that a stock has been taken over at book value of 3 lakh 50 because nothing is given below regarding stock. However, goodwill has been taken over at 1 lakh. Property, plant and equipment have been taken over at 2 lakh 10,000. Likewise, property has been taken over at 1 lakh 80,000. Because information below is given with respect to goodwill, that goodwill has been taken over at 1 lakh and property has been taken over at 1 lakh 80,000. Further, it is given in the question, bottom limited agreed to pay 90,000 in cash. So, bottom limited this time has agreed to pay 90,000 in cash. It is given to you that bottom limited shall pay you 90,000 rupees and 90,000 it shall pay you in cash. And balance. Now, just have a look over this word balance. And balance in the form of equity shares of 100 each. So, whatever balance of the total purchase consideration will be. In this particular question, you have noticed that total purchase consideration is not given. However, you are being given that purchasing company is going to give you 90,000 in cash. And further, it is written that balance will be provided by issue of equity shares of rupees 100 each. That means whatever balance is there, that will be what we call through equity share. But problem is that we cannot find out the balance amount unless and until we shall have the amount of purchase consideration. I told you just a moment ago, there are three methods of computing purchase consideration. In this question, we shall have to apply the net assets method to compute the purchase consideration. Why we shall have to apply the purchase consideration? Now, just pay attention. Whenever question will say that so much of payment is being made by way of this sort of form, that in this case, it is being given in cash, 90,000 in cash and balance and balance so whenever this particular word will be there and balance immediately you come to the conclusion that you will have to apply the net assets methods of computing the purchase consideration if purchase consideration is not given please pay attention if purchase consideration is not given and question says that some portion of the purchase consideration is by way of shares and balance in cash so here also the word balance is coming into play. You will have to apply the purchase consideration. In this question, some portion of the purchase consideration is being what we call paid by way of cash and balance by way of equity share. Important point is word balance. I hope you got actually got the idea and got the clue. In fact, when we have to apply the net assets method, is it clear to you or not? Is it clear? Fine then. Further, it is given in the question that expenses of liquidation amounted to 15,000. Expenses of liquidation are 15,000. Nothing is mentioned who is bearing the expense. If the question remains silent with respect to uh, who is the company which is bearing the what we call expenses, in that case, always presume expenses are being borne by the vendor company, acquiry company. Acquiry company is the company which is selling the business or which is being taken over. Correct? It is also known as vendor company. Now question says that show ledger account in the books of top limited and pass entries in the books of purchasing company also. So this is the question. So important point which we need to understand is that in this particular question, we shall have to find out the amount of purchase consideration. Then we will prepare the ledger account in the books of the acquiry company. And then finally, and then finally, we will have to pass the entries in the books of acquirer company also. Is it clear to you? In order to understand this particular question quite well, let's first of all start with computation of purchase consideration. This is the first step to solve the question. Computation of purchase consideration. Computation of purchase consideration. So first of all, I am going to compute the purchase consideration. In order to compute the purchase consideration, I told you, as far as net assets method is concerned, first of all, I will look into the fact that which are the assets which have been taken over. So that means, first of all, I am going to take into account assets taken over. 
assets taken over which are the assets which have been taken over assets taken over further i will look uh, in fact i will also consider their revised value in case if it is given that mean all the assets which have been taken over if their revised value is given i will consider the revised value otherwise i will simply take the book value asset taken over at revised value if any at revised value if any is it clear to you this is how i am going to compute the purchase consideration first of all i will take into account which are the assets which have been taken over in this particular question we have already gone through in this case it was given that as far as property was concerned property property is being taken over at 180000 so at what value it is being taken over that value i am going to write over here is it clear to you however as far as property plant and sorry plant and machinery is concerned its book value was 210000 and no revised value was given so we shall presume that plant and machinery has been taken over at 210000 besides in this question there is stock also now stock is actually equal to 350000 no further information is given with respect to stock i will write the book value correct besides that in this particular question there is cash also but cash is not taken over i will not consider cash however there is goodwill and below it is given that goodwill has been valued at 1 lakh rupees or goodwill has been taken over at 1 lakh so all the assets which have been taken over first of all you are going to take them into account then you are going to total them 8 lakh 40 thousand 8 lakh 40 thousand so we may say that purchasing company has taken over all the assets at 8 lakh 40 thousand correct now i will subtract less liabilities taken over liabilities taken over liabilities taken over in this particular question it is clearly mentioned that purchasing company is taking over all the assets and liabilities except cash that means both the liabilities there are two liabilities in the question so both the liabilities shall be presumed to be taken over there are 7.5 percent debenture in the question so 7.5 percent debenture 1 lakh in case if their revised value would have been given i would have considered the same further we are being given creditors we show, we saw in the balance sheet there are two liability one is debenture another one is creditors and amount of creditor is equal to 1 lakh 50 thousand i will write 1 lakh 50 so as far as liabilities are concerned we may say that liabilities have been taken over at 2 lakh 50 thousand so quite obviously this will become now we will take into account the difference and this difference will become the amount of purchase consideration so this is how we are going to track out purchase consideration in case purchase consideration is not given in the questions correct so if purchase consideration is not given in the question to net assets methods this is how we are going to derive the purchase consideration net assets method shall be used when the question would say that some portion of the purchase consideration is being discharged through so and so form and balance in so and so form is it clear to you once you have computed the purchase consideration then this is your first step then under the second step you also take into account the mode of payment mode of payment mode of payment means in what mode this purchase consideration shall be discharged by the purchasing company mode of payment so i will write here now mode of payment as far as mode of payment is concerned mode of payment we have already seen that purchasing company has agreed to provide 90,000 rupees in cash and it was written in the question balance by way of equity shares so what will be the balance balance will be 5 lakh so equity shares 5 lakh so 5 lakh 90,000 will be our purchase consideration and this is how this purchase consideration shall be discharged is it clear to you or not up to this particular point you should not confront any sort of problem because these are initial stages now i will prepare the ledger in the books of acquiry ledgers in the books of acquiry
in order to prepare the ledger accounts in the books of acquiry if you remember last time in the last session we talked about this particular fact first of all i will have to prepare in fact it is always better to prepare acquirer company account so i will prepare acquirer company account one besides that i will prepare the realization account correct realization account and besides realization account i will also prepare cash account and then shareholders account correct shareholders account so these are the accounts which i have prepared shareholders account i will also prepare cash bank account and then realization and then acquirer company account correct as usual first of all we look into the balance sheet obviously the liability side is given first and over there you remember first item was share capital so first of all i am going to transfer the share capital worth rupees 5 lakh to the shareholders account so i will write here 5 lakh the second item if you remember was reserves so as far as reserves are concerned even reserves are also transferred to the credit side of shareholders account so i shall write here 90000 reserves besides reserves there were debentures and creditors two liabilities and in the last session we talked about this particular fact that all the liabilities are transferred to the credit side of realization account irrespective of the fact whether taken over or not however in this particular question both the liabilities have been taken over so i shall write here 7.5 percent debentures 7.5 percent debentures given in the question one lakh and then I will write creditors. As far as creditors are concerned, creditor is equal to 1,50,000. Is it clear to you? So that means now our liability side is closed. Likewise, we can now close the asset side. Towards the asset side, we come across the first item as property. Now here, one point which you need to take, take into your mind and Keep in your mind, whenever we are going to transfer any balance sheet item in the realization account, that will always be at what we call balance sheet value, that is book value. Is it clear to you? Don't write here property 1,80,000. Is it clear to you or not? If you are going to close any item of the balance sheet, that must be closed at book value. Second point is plant and machinery. Now, plant and machinery in the balance sheet given to us at 2,10,000. I am going to write here 2,10,000. In the balance sheet, then we have goodwill. Even goodwill will be posted here, but at 60,000. Don't write here revised value. Is it clear to you or not? And then we have a stock in this particular case. Amount of stock is 3,50,000. So I am going to write here 3,50,000. Besides that, we also have cash, but cash hasn't been taken over only caution which we require is with respect to cash whether cash has been taken over or not if cash would have been taken over i would have simply written here cash that's all however in this particular question cash is not taken over so that is why i will simply write cash balance in the cash account balance brought down seventy thousand. so with that our assets and liability side have been closed now actually we have to consider the purchase consideration now the entry for the purchase consideration will be, I told you even the last class, your acquirer company account debit to realization account. This is the due entry. Acquirer company account debit to realization account. So on the credit side of the realization account, you are going to write by acquiry company. Sorry, by acquirer company. I told acquiry, acquirer company. In bracket, you can write purchase consideration. Amount of purchase consideration is 5,90,000. So you are going to write here 5,90. Immediately now close it, sorry, cross it to the debit side of acquirer company account. On the debit side of acquirer company, you will write obviously 5,90,000. Now you are going to pass the entry for the mode of payment, which you are going to receive from the acquirer company. You are receiving cash worth rupees 90,000, if you remember. 
cash worth rupees 90000 and besides that you are receiving shares in acquirer company shares in acquirer company shares in acquirer company that is equal to 5 lakh the moment you are going to receive the mode of payment this particular account will get closed even in the last session we talked about this particular fact that if you are receiving cash then cash will be posted to the debit side of the cash account on the debit side of the cash account i will write acquirer company and we have received cash of rupees 90000 so i will write here 90000 and even in the last session we stressed upon this particular fact that if we are receiving purchase consideration in a mode other than cash then whatever mode it might be you are going to transfer it to the debit side of shareholders account so on the debit side of the shareholders account i will write shares in acquirer company account shares in acquirer company account shares in acquirer company account shares in acquirer company we have received 5 lakh worth of shares now we have received the purchase consideration also next point to pay attention to is just to have a have a look over the fact whether is there any asset which hasn't been taken over and which has been sold in this particular case all these assets which you have posted here have been taken over correct likewise then you will look into the fact is there any liability which hasn't been taken over in this case both the liabilities have been taken over you need not require to pay off any liability the last thing is expenses in this case there are realization expenses and realization expenses are being borne by actually when uh, what we call acquiry company so on the debit side of realization account because our entry will be realization account debit to cash account so that is the reason i am going to write here to cash realization account debit to cash this time acquiry company is bearing the expenses so i shall write here 15000 correct 15000 worth of expenses will be written over here then I will transfer this amount to the credit side of the cash account. Obviously, I am going to write here by realization. 15,000. 15,000. So, now I am in a position to tally out this particular account. When I will do, when I will tally it out, I will find that there is a profit of 55,000. So, I will write here 55,000. So, profit will be transferred to shareholders account, profit transfer to shareholders account. So, profit has been transferred to shareholders account, 55,000 and on the credit side of shareholders account, I am going to write now realization profit. Realization profit and profit is equal to 55,000. This is how I am going to close the realization account. Then as far as cash bank account is concerned, I told you whatever balance will be there, you are going to post it to the shareholders account. If you remember in the last session, we talked about this. So by shareholders account, 160 minus 15 will be equal to 1,45,000. So 1,45,000 worth of cash you are going to pay to the shareholders. On the debit side of the shareholders, you are going to write here to cash 1,45,000. 1,45,000. So, total will be 6,45,000, 6,45,000. Shareholder account must get tally of its own. Is it clear to you or not? Now, how many steps we have done? Now, under the fourth step, books of acquirer. Books of acquirers. As far as acquirer is concerned, now acquirer will pass the entry for the assets and liabilities which it has taken over in this particular case our first entry will be with respect to all those assets which we have taken over obviously here we are going to take into account the revised value correct now in this particular case as far as property is concerned we have already seen that property was being taken over in fact, was taken over at 1,80,000. So, I will write here 1,80,000. Correct? Then, besides that, we have taken over plant and machinery. I, I will write here two plant and machinery account. And plant and machinery has been taken over at 2,10,000. Correct? 2,10,000. Besides that, we have taken over goodwill also. And goodwill was worth rupees 1 lakh. 
we took over goodwill at 1 lakh. Then we also took over stock. The stock was taken over at book value 3 lakh 50. India centered three states that all the assets and liability must be recorded at fair value. Even though we are writing the book value, we are presuming that the book value is equal to fair value, it means. Now we shall write all those liability which we have taken over to 7.5% debentures. 7.5% debentures were worth rupees 1 lakh. So I will write here 1 lakh. Then I will write here two creditors. Creditors were 1 lakh 50,000. Logically, it means the purchasing company so far has written net assets only. Correct? Assets minus liability is nothing but net assets. So now when I am writing here to consideration, it means I am comparing the net assets with the amount which I am paying to the acquiring company. To consideration. Consideration. Consideration, it will be equal to 5,90,000. Some of you might be wondering, sir, why we are not writing NCI? Because there is no NCI. When you are taking over all the assets and liability of the other, other entity, no question of any NCI. Is it clear to you? Now, generally, some balance actually arises. But this time, there is no balance. Is it clear to you? This time, there is no balance. Correct? So, now the next entry which you are going to pass is with respect to discharge or purchase consideration. Now, consideration account debit. Consideration account debit that is equal to 5,90,000. Consideration account debit 5,90,000. Two cash, I will write now, two cash, 90,000. And I will write here two equity share capital. Equity share capital. Five lakh worth of share capital. In fact, one share is of 100 each. We can also show it in this manner 5000 into 100. Expenses have been borne by acquiry company. We are not going to pass any entry for the same. Is it clear to you or not? Is it clear? Right, sir. It is absolutely clear to, clear to us. After this, now we come over to the next section and next section is quite vital. Next, next section is quite vital because in this particular section, now we will learn computation of purchase consideration through intrinsic value of method. Intrinsic value of method. What is intrinsic value of method? I will let you know in a short while. In a short while. Don't worry about that. I will give you a detailed what we call explanation regarding the same and how intrinsic value when actually we are supposed to use the intrinsic value of method. The point is also this. When purchase consideration is not given, correct, I told you there are three methods available. Generally, we apply net assets method when there is written in the question that some balance portion is payable in so and so, in so, and so form. So generally, in that particular situation, we apply net assets method to compute the purchase consideration. However, in case of intrinsic value method, you need not require to stretch your mind because it will be very clearly given in the question that we have to use intrinsic value method. Good thing about this particular method is this. How we are going to use the intrinsic value method, what we are supposed to do under it, we are going to actually give you. And remember, in examination, lots of questions are being asked from this particular topic. From this particular topic, almost every year, there was a question. So that is the, that, that should work. All the more as a what we call motivating factor that why you should pay a little bit extra attention as far as this particular topic is concerned. 6.1 now we are moving over to. First I will read the question. I will explain each and every point. In fact, I have framed this particular question just to elaborate the things. Correct? The following are the balance sheet of K Limited and J Limited. In this particular question, as you can see th this time, and this is the first question which we are confronting wherein balance sheet of both the companies are given so far or hitherto whatever question which we have done over there the balance sheet of only one company acquiry company was given but now in this question we shall see later on that balance sheet of acquirer and acquiry is given to us correct so this is the balance sheet given to us and below it is written that board of directors of k limited approved to take over j limited on the aforementioned date 
In this case, it is written that board of directors of K Limited approved to take over J Limited. So that means in this particular case, we may say that K Limited is the purchasing company or the acquirer company and J Limited is the acquiry company or the company which is selling the business also known as vendor company. Is it clear to you? Further, it is given Actually, question simply states that find out the ratio of exchange of share on the basis of book value. Find out the ratio of exchange of share on the basis of book value. Try to understand. Whenever in the question it will be written that we have to value the share on the basis of net assets or on the basis of book value. Immediately you come to the conclusion that this question relates to intrinsic value of shares method. Is it clear to you or not? So in this particular question, I will have to compute the intrinsic value of shares. Is it clear? Here below written that board of director of K Limited approved to take over J Limited. And generally when the question is of intrinsic value of share method, under such a situation, again, we need not require to stretch our mind unnecessarily because generally it will be presumed that all the assets and liabilities have been taken over. Correct? So now on such uh, what we call considerations, we start a little bit of what we call doing analysis of the balance sheet. Quite obviously, in this particular case, J Limited is the entity which is the acquiry entity. So we look into the items of this entity first. Here it is written equity share capital. Of course, equity share capital of purchasing company is 4 lakh and equity share capital of this entity is 180 and 5 lakh and 1 lakh is general reserve. Then there is profit and loss account also 3 lakh 80,000. Then there are three liabilities, debenture, creditors and bills payable. Purchasing companies having debenture worth rupees 350, creditors worth rupees 2 lakh, besides that bills payable worth rupees 50,000. As far as this particular entity is concerned, there are no debentures. However, there are two liabilities, creditors and bills payable. Creditors and bills payable. And then we are being given fixed asset are 7 lakh and 3 lakh, besides there are investment 5 lakh, but this entity is having not having any investment, current asset is equal to 6 lakh and 2 lakh and of course total is given. That's all. And we have to find out only the ratio of exchange. But still I am going to make a full-fledged analysis of this particular question. Just pay attention. Question looks small, but solution is little bit what we call, little bit longer. So, as far as intrinsic value is concerned, now we are actually discussing the intrinsic value concept. Correct. What exactly the intrinsic value is, why we compute it, all these questions will be answered to you within a flick of second. Just pay attention first of all. Under the intrinsic value of method, first of all, what you are supposed to do, you are supposed to compute the intrinsic value of share of both the entity. What we mean by intrinsic value, I will explain. You will have to show a little bit of what we call, a little bit of patience in this particular case. Correct. So, I will write here one acquirer company. You can also write the name also. Acquirer company that is J Limited. Sorry, J Limited or K Limited. K Limited is the acquirer company. Acquirer entity. An acquiry entity is J Limited. First of all, you will have to compute the intrinsic value of both the companies and how the intrinsic value will be computed. First of all, you are going to compute the net assets. First of all, you are going to compute the net asset as I told you even in the earlier session, correct? You are going to compute the net asset in the same manner which we adopted earlier. So in order to compute the net assets, first of all, I will look into the balance sheet, look over the what we call lower part. And over there, we, we are being given fixed asset or property, plant and equipment, whatever you may like to write. Only three items are given as far as asset sites are concerned. Now, fixed assets of acquired company given to us is equal to 7 lakh. So, I will write here 7 lakh. If any revised value would have been given, I would have written that. Correct? At the same time, acquiry company, 3 lakh. Then we are being given that there are some investment also. So I will write here investments. I told you earlier 
that intrinsic value of shares method of computation of purchase consideration is nothing but just an extended form of net assets method. Correct. Now, as far as this entity is concerned, its investment was given to us as 5 lakh. So, I am going to write here 5 lakh. However, there were no investment as far as this particular entity is concerned. Then we are having current assets and current asset is equal to 6 lakhs. And as far as this entity is concerned, the current asset is equal to 2 lakh. Current asset is equal to 2 lakh. Only 3 items of assets are given. Now I am going to total it up. If I am going to total it up, it comes to 18 lakhs. 12 plus 6. And it comes to 5 lakh. Correct? So assets we have computed. So, in order to compute the net assets, all I have to do is to subtract the liabilities. As far as liabilities are concerned, we saw in the question there are three liabilities. One debentures, one is debentures. Besides that, we are having creditors. Creditors. And we are also having bills payable in this particular question. Debentures were worth rupees 3,50,000 if you remember. However, as far as acquiry entity is concerned, there are no debentures in the books of acquiry company. Then coming over to the creditors, creditors given to us is equal to 2 lakh. I will write here 2 lakh. This company is having creditors equal to 1 lakh, I think so. So I am going to write here 1 lakh. Correct. And then as far as bills payable are concerned, this entity is having bills payable worth rupees 50,000. This entity is having bills payable worth rupees 40,000. By subtracting 350 plus 2 lakh plus 56 lakh from 18 lakh, obviously now I am going to get uh, 12 lakhs. 18 lakh minus 6 lakh is equal to 12 lakh. Isn't it or not? Similarly, if I am going to subtract 1,40,000 from 5 lakh, I am going to get 3,60,000. So, I will write here 3,60,000. Your first target should be to compute the net asset. Remember one thing, we are trying to find out the intrinsic value. In order to find out the intrinsic value, first of all, I will have to find out the net assets. So, assets minus liability is known as net assets without an iota of doubt. You have found out the net assets. And it is also known as assets for shareholders. Net assets means assets for shareholders. By subtracting the liability from the assets, whatever is left, debt always belongs to shareholders. So it is also known as assets for shareholders. In this question, in this question, if there would have been any preference share capital, I would have subtracted the same also. So, preference share capital, however, in this particular question is not given. If it would have been given, I would have subtracted it. By subtracting preference share capital from the assets available for shareholders, now, obviously, I am left up with assets available for equity shares. Assets available for equity shares. I am left up with assets available for equity shareholders. So, assets available for equity shareholder is equal to 12 lakh and equal to 3 lakh 60,000 as far as these entities are concerned. So, your basic target whenever you are going to compute the intrinsic value of share, first of all, is to actually arrive at assets available for equity shareholder and it is not a very hell of a task. Only thing is that, first of all, you need to find out the net assets, subtract any preference share capital if it is given in the question, so you can easily get assets available for equity share. Now, all you have to do is to divide it by the number of equity shares, by the number of equity shares, by the number of equity shares. Now, see here, in the balance sheet share capital of, share capital of purchasing company or acquired company, K Limited is 4 lakh. And one share is of 10 each. So we may safely conclude that number of shares, number of equity shares is equal to 40,000. While as far as acquiry company J Limited is concerned, its total share capital is 1,80,000. One share is of 10 each. So number of share is equal to 18,000. By dividing the assets available for equity share 
by dividing the assets available for equity shares by the number of equity shareholder, we are getting something. And this value is known as intrinsic value of share. Correct? In this case, it is equal to 20. Now I tell you, now I am going to explain you a little bit about what we call intrinsic value of share. Just imagine for a while, suppose I have invested very huge amount in this particular company or let us say what we call acquirer company. As a shareholder, if I, if I have invested very huge amount actually in this particular company, quite obviously I, I would be a little bit concerned about what we call my investment because huge block of shares I have purchased. So in order to know the health of my investment, I would go for computation of intrinsic value of share. First of all, what we mean by intrinsic value? Intrinsic means inside value, inside value. Why it is known as intrinsic value of share? Because never ever intrinsic value of share is publicized. Is it clear to you? Intrinsic value of share is never ever publicized. It is never released. So that is why it is known as internal value of share or intrinsic value of share. By computing the intrinsic value of share, how I will come to know regarding the health of my investment? For example, for example, in this particular case, we know that face value of the share is 10. Face value of the share is 10. And intrinsic value is 30. Intrinsic value is 30. It means suppose today, if this company gets liquidated, even in that particular case, I need not require to worry about my investment. Simply because of the fact that this company has got enough asset to back one share of rupees 10 each one share of rupees 10 each is backed by 30 rupees worth of asset so the financial position of the company is very strong so in case if intrinsic value of share happens to be more than the face value or nominal value of the share always presume that health of the company is very good very sound you need not require to worry so in practice in practical life generally those investors who are very heavy investors who have invested very huge amount in the company generally they go for computation of intrinsic value of share so through intrinsic value of share they can easily conclude regarding the safety of their investment and accordingly then they can they take the decisions is it clear to you so in this case we have computed the intrinsic value of share of both the companies number one and honestly speaking, the financial position of both the company is sound because their intrinsic value exceeds their respective, as I said, nominal value of shares. Is it clear to you or not? So now, and remember one thing, you will have to pay extra attention because tomorrow when you will become professional, you, you will have to face lots of situations with respect to mergers, absorptions, day in, day out, lots of situations actually take place. Correct. And generally in practical life, generally in practical life, when a company takes over the business of the other entity, the purchase consideration is decided by the intrinsic value of share of both the company. This is the most practical actually thing which you are studying here. Is it clear to you? So we have computed the intrinsic value of share number one. So generally under the questions of intrinsic value of share, your first step will be computation of intrinsic value of share. So we have computed the intrinsic value of share. After having computed the intrinsic value of share, your next question should be, so what is the amount of purchase consideration? You ask yourself, amount of purchase consideration. As a acquirer company, you are supposed to pay to the acquiring company. So what is the amount of purchase consideration? You have already computed that. See here, your purchase consideration will be equal to net assets. You have already computed assets minus liability 360 is nothing but the purchase consideration. This is the amount which you, you are supposed to deliver to the purchasing company, is to the acquiring company. Is it clear to you? So we have found out the purchase consideration already 360,000 that is net assets. Purchase consideration no doubt is 360,000. Is it clear to you or not? Sir, then why this question is of intrinsic value of share if we are saying that purchase consideration is still 360? I will tell you. I will tell you in a short while. Correct? Just pay attention. First of all, your purchase consideration will be equal to 360. Now, the next question is, how many share purchasing company will issue to discharge the purchase consideration? 
number of shares number of shares number of shares to be issued number of shares to be issued by number of shares to be issued by purchasing company or acquirer company to discharge purchase consideration to discharge purchase consideration for that what you are supposed to do you will simply look into the amount of consideration which we have already 360 and then I am going to divide it by the intrinsic value of share of acquirer company intrinsic value of share of acquirer company or purchasing company to know how many number of shares I will issue to discharge the purchase consideration pay attention here in this particular case purchase consideration is equal to 360 isn't it or not and what is the intrinsic value which you just computed intrinsic value was 30 by dividing it by 30 I will come to know how many shares I am going to issue obviously it comes to 12,000 that means purchasing company will issue 12,000 shares of rupees 10 each at the rate of 30 because intrinsic value of our share is quite high we are not going to issue 36,000 share that is 360 divided by the face value in fact we are going to issue 12,000 share it means that is 12,000 shares 12,000 shares of rupees 10 each of rupees 10 each at the rate of 30 that means 12,000 shares are being issued at a premium of 20 because of rupees 10 each are being issued at the rate of 30 is it clear to you now the second now the fourth point is you have found out you have found out how many what is the amount of purchase consideration and how you are going to discharge you are going to discharge the entire purchase consideration by issue of 12,000 shares of 10 each at the rate of 30 but the question was asking you compute the ratio of exchange how to compute the ratio of exchange ratio of exchange ratio of exchange how to how to compute the ratio of exchange how we are going to compute the ratio of exchange in this particular case how to compute the ratio of exchange first of all you have to think in this manner one is acquirer company that is k limited another is acquiry company acquiry company correct how many shares acquirer company is giving to the first of all you let me know whatever purchase consideration which is given by the acquirer company to the acquiry company to whom it is given in the acquiry company i am the purchasing company you are the acquiry company if i am delivering 12000 shares to whom i am going to give the share to the owners quite obviously purchase consideration will be received by the owners correct and owners are the shareholders that mean purchasing company acquired company is issuing 12,000 shares but in acquiry company there are how many number of shares 18,000 shares are there that mean there are 18,000 shares in acquiry company and for that acquiry acquirer company is offering only 12,000 shares oh my god anyway we are supposed to compute the ratio of exchange for that purpose we are going to look at how many shares are going to be issued by the acquirer company to the number of shareholders in the what we call acquiry company so total number of shares in the acquiry company is 18 and we are issuing actually 12,000 shares is it clear to you so in this case if I am going to compute the ratio it will be equal to 2 is to 3 2 is to 3 now here please pay attention what does it mean it means for every three shares it means try to understand there is no point in solving the question getting the answers that's all unless and until you are going to comprehend the things 
it means for every three shares suppose if you are the shareholder of the acquiring company and if you are having three shares if you are having three shares the purchasing company is going to give you only two shares purchasing company is only going to give you two shares in practical life when a particular entity takes over the other entity how it is decided because the number of shareholders and number of share may be different so how it is arrived at that how many shares purchasing company will deliver to the shareholders that is always on the basis of intrinsic value of share so in this particular case purchasing company is going to issue two shares for every three shares i still hope that some of you are still having some sort, some sort of doubt. I am not saying no doubt. Now see here, I will explain it further. Suppose you are the shareholder of the acquiry company and you are having three share. Intrinsic value of acquiry company is 20 which we computed. That means value of your share is equal to 60. While the intrinsic value of our company is 30 and value of two share is equal to 60. Our two shares are sufficient for your three shares. So that is why we are going to issue you only two shares. Is it clear to you or not? So that is how in practical life, it is a very practical concept. I have already told you in practical life, day in, day out, we actually watch out. There are so many mergers, demergers, acquisitions, takeovers are taking place. And how it is decided over there that purchasing company will issue how many shares for the existing shareholders of the company which is being taken over or being acquired. So that is by way of what we call computation of intrinsic value of share and through that we decide upon, we come arrive over what we call ratio of exchange, correct? So this is the point which you need to understand in this particular question. Is it clear to you? Now, now a question has asked us only this much, compute the ratio of exchange, but still I am going to solve it further. Further, let me right step number five so after the ratio of exchange now i will prepare the ledger account also just for the sake of better understanding i know sometimes it becomes a little bit boring but a little bit of more efforts obviously at this particular level are required so books of acquiry company In the books of acquiry company, pay attention. I'm going to prepare. Mm -hmm. I'm going to prepare acquirer company account, realization account. Correct. This time I'm not preparing cash account. Why I'm not preparing cash account? I will let you know in a short while. But first. I have prepared so far only shareholders account, equity shareholders account. I am going to prepare realization account. And I am going to prepare acquirer companies account. Acquirer is K limited. Acquirer company account. Correct. In this particular question, First of all, share capital of acquiry company is given in the question as 1,80,000. So I will write 1,80,000 in the equity shareholder account. That is equal to 1,80,000. Correct. After that, in the question, there was general reserve also and profit and loss account also. So general reserve in this case is 1 lakh. Profit and loss account is also given in the question and that was 80,000. After that, there are three liabilities. However, acquiry company is having only two liabilities, no debentures. So creditors, we are going to transfer to the credit side of realization account, one lakh. Bills payable, obviously, we are going to transfer here, 40,000. So our liability side is closed. Now we move over to the asset side. There are only three items. In fact, two items of asset as far as acquiry company is concerned. Fixed asset or property, plant and equipment is equal to 3 lakh. Then we have got in this case current asset which is equal to 2 lakh. Which is equal to 2 lakh. No investments were there. Now we shall look into the purchase consideration. 
on the credit side of the realization account i will write here by acquirer company account by acquirer company account and purchase consideration due purchase consideration you remember 360000 now we will cross it to the acquirer company's account i will write here to realization account that is equal to 360000 and we will receive the purchase consideration this time entire purchase consideration is being discharged by way of shares so i will write here by shares in acquirer company account in acquirer company account that is equal to 360000 no doubt this account now will get closed and because we are not receiving any cash so no question of posting it we are receiving only shares so shares will be posted to the debit side of equity shareholders account shares in acquirer company account shares in acquirer company account shares in acquirer company account is equal to 360000 Correct. Now, no further information is given in the question. In this question, no information because all the assets have been taken over. All the liabilities have been taken over. We need not require to discharge any liability. Similarly, there are no, there is no information with respect to expenses. So obviously now I'm going to close it down. As you can see, this account is already getting closed. Honestly speaking, whenever you will be given question, based upon intrinsic value of share never ever the questioner would ask you accounting in the books of acquiry company never ever because there is hardly anything to do that is what exactly i wanted to prove but at the same time don't make it a rule that there will never be any loss or profit in case of what we call intrinsic value of shares question no nothing like that it is it coincidentally in this case both the sides are getting tallied off its own so that is why no loss or profit because in this question, we did not prepare cash account. We did not prepare cash account simply because of the fact in this particular case, cash is not given, number one. Number two, even what we call through purchase consideration, we are not receiving any cash. So that is the reason why I did not prepare what we call cash account. Now we are going to tally equity shareholder account. It is getting tallied off its own. You can see so easily. Is it clear to you? So never ever they are going to ask you any what we call accounting in the books of acquiry company if the question is of what we call intrinsic value of shares. Is it clear to you? Now under the fifth step, what I am going to sub do? Books of, this is step number six in fact. Books of acquirer company. Generally, whenever question is asked from intrinsic value of shares method, you will be you will be asked to compute the purchase consideration and prepare the balance sheet in the books of acquirer company. Prepare the balance sheet in the books of the acquirer company. Generally, whenever you are going to receive the question from intrinsic value method, is it clear to you or not? So books of acquirer company in the books of acquirer company first of all i am going to write the entry we have taken over fixed asset F fixed asset we have taken over fixed asset we just saw that fixed asset were worth rupees 3 lakh fixed asset of acquiry company were taken over at 3 lakh besides that acquiry company was having current asset and we took them also current assets were worth rupees 2 lakh there are two liabilities also, if you remember, isn't it or not, of acquiry company. One was creditors, creditors was 1 lakh and besides that there was bills payable to the extent of 40,000. And I will write here two consideration, consideration we computed, consideration was 3,60,000. This time again, there is no balance, correct? Neither goodwill nor any capital reserve. Now we come over to the second point. We will discharge the consideration. In order to discharge the consideration, you are going to write 3,60,000 first of all. 3,60,000. And then you are going to write here two share capital. Remember, you are the entity which is issuing the share. 
Obviously, you will have to reflect the nominal value and security premium separately. Now, 12,000 into 10, that will be equal to 1,20,000. That will be equal to 1,20,000. Besides that, you are going to write here two security premium account. Correct? Two security premium account. Now, what will be the amount of security premium? That is equal to 12,000 into 12,000 into 20. 12,000 into 20, that is equal to 2,40,000. That is equal to 2,40,000. Is it clear to you or not? Is it clear? Now, now, you may be asked to prepare the balance sheet also. How you are going to prepare the balance sheet? This is the point. Because generally when the question will be of intrinsic value of share, they are going to ask you calculation of purchase consideration, number one. Then generalization in the books of acquirer company and also preparation of the balance sheet in the books of the acquirer company. So in this case, we are going to now prepare the balance sheet. How to prepare the balance sheet? That is another important point. Is it clear to you or not? How to prepare the balance sheet? In this particular question, if you remember, in order to prepare the balance sheet, first of all, I need to have what we call complete balance sheet in front of me. Complete balance sheet in front of me of the acquiry entity. Of the acquiry entity and acquirer entity both. Is it clear to you? For, first of all, let me prepare the format. Assets. Under the assets, I am going to write non-current assets. First of all. Under the non-current asset, what I am going to write here, I am going to write here first of all, because in this question we are being given fixed asset, so I will write the fixed asset, correct? I will write the fixed assets of the acquirer company and acquiry company. Is it clear to you? For example, if I will have to look into the balance sheet, I will find that fixed assets I will have to look into the balance sheet in this particular question. Now, where is the question? Now, you can see fixed asset is equal to 7 lakh and 3 lakh. So, all I have to do is to simply add it. Fixed asset 7 lakh plus 3 lakhs is equal to 10 lakh. That is equal to 10 lakh. Actually, rule is, you are going to take the value of the fixed asset as per the balance sheet of the acquirer entity, of the acquirer entity. At what value you are going to write the fixed asset that depends upon the fact, the amount which you have written in the entry. Because in this question, we have taken over fixed asset at 3 lakh only. If we would have taken it at 4 lakh, I would have added here 4 lakh. Is it clear to you or not? Is it clear? Similarly, now we will look at current asset. Let's have a look over the current asset. As far as current assets are concerned, current asset, before current asset, there is investment also. Anyway, 6 lakh and 2 lakhs are the current asset. 6 lakh and 2 lakh are the current asset. And before that, we are having investment and amount of investment is equal to 5 lakh. Amount of investment is equal to 5 lakh. Just wait. Generally, after the fixed asset, investment should be written. So, I will write investments. Now, investment of acquirer entity is only there. So, I will write the investment at 5 lakh. Now, I will write the current assets. As far as current assets are concerned, pay attention. Current asset, you will see here, 6 lakh plus 2 lakh. So, first of all, I will write the amount of 6 lakh which is appearing in the column of acquirer company as per the balance sheet. At what value current asset I should add? I will look into the entry. Actually, in the entry, I have written 2 lakh only. So, I will simply write here 2 lakh, 8 lakhs. Is it clear to you? Now, we will move over to the liability side, equity and liability. equity and liability. Under the equity and liability, first of all, I am going to write the share capital. Now, just pay attention. In the share capital, 
first of all you will write the share capital of the acquirer entity you are not going to add this share capital reason because this share capital is already closed in the books of the acquiring entity you haven't taken over the share capital is it clear to you so first of all you are going to write the share capital of the acquirer entity once you have written it now you must also look at the entries which you have passed for example in the books of acquirer entity these two entity these two what we call entries you have passed and in the entries you have written share capital 1 lakh 20 thousand because you issued some shares so obviously your share capital will increase by 1 lakh 20 thousand is it clear to you so you are going to write here 8 lakh 20 thousand then i am going to write here other equity other equity means reserves and surplus now i will look into the balance sheet again in the balance sheet i find that i find that just wait i will have to see what this item is in the balance sheet what was the amount oh this is the balance sheet actually i was looking at the wrong end the balance sheet is actually four lakh i'm extremely sorry I was looking at the valuation of shares. Just wait. Sometime there is internet lagging. No, this creates problem. Share capital actually is 4 lakh, not 7 lakh. So 5 lakh 20 thousand I am going to write. I will totally eat up. Don't worry about that. Now that we are talking about other equity, as far as other equity is concerned, reserves of the acquirer companies, four, acquirer companies 5 lakh. And remember, the, these reserves you, are, you haven't taken over because these reserves have already been posted to the shareholders account. Is it clear to you? You will simply write 5 lakh and 3 lakh. So general reserve is 5 lakh. Under the other equity, you will write general reserve as 5 lakh, correct? General reserve as 5 lakh, this is the problem. First, let me actually correct it. It should be 5 lakh 20 thousand. And then I will write general reserve. General reserve amount I have forgotten now. It is 5 lakh. And then there is profit and loss account also. Then you flip through the pages. No, that is the only problem. Just wait for a while. I want to actually show you the balance sheet also. So 5 lakh and profit and loss account is 3 lakh. Profit and loss account is 3 lakh. So I will write here profit and loss account. Is it clear to you? You are not going to add the items. You are not going to add what we call profit or loss account of acquiry company because or general reserve of acquiry company because those items have already been shifted to the equity shareholders account and closed. Now when you will write the other equity, you will have to keep in mind that security premium also figures here. For example, when you pass the entries, you have written security premium of 2,40,000. So 2,40,000 worth of security premium will also find place over here. Is it clear to you or not? Clear? Now, after that, I will write here two. Now, I am going to write here non-current liability. Under the non-current liability in this question, there are debentures. Correct? Now, debentures are of acquirer entity only. In this particular case, debentures of acquirer entity were given in the question. That is 3,50,000. Deventures are 3,50,000. Let I am writing it here. And then we have creditors 2 lakh. And then we have bills payable. These are the three liabilities of acquired entity. So that I need not require to flip again. So debentures I will write 3 lakh 50 because debentures are only of 
acquirer entity. Besides the debentures, now I am going to write the amount of creditors. We just saw that creditors of acquirer entity is given in the question. Creditors were 2 lakh. So I will write the creditors. But problem is that we have also taken over the creditors of acquiring entity. At what value we have taken? That can be reflected through this particular entity. At 1 lakh you have taken over the creditors. So you will simply write here 1 lakh. So your total will be equal to 3 lakh. Is it clear to you? Likewise, bills payable. First, you write the bills payable of the acquirer entity. Now, bills payable of the acquirer entity, which we wrote, were 50,000. So, I will write here 50,000. And now, I will simply look at what value we took over the bills payable of the acquiring entity. Bills payable were taken over at 40,000. Is it clear to you? So, I will write here 40,000. So, total will be equal to 90,000. Is it clear to you or not? But, 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 just wait. Actually, these are current liabilities. Now, the next thing is that, what which you are supposed to do, always make a check of the entries which you have written over here. Always make a check of the entries which you have written, correct? For example, you will have to write here, you will see here that whether fixed assets have been adjusted, current assets have been adjusted or not, creditors have been adjusted, bills payable have been adjusted, then consideration is already cancelled out, share capital you have written, security premium you have written. Once you have made a thorough check, then only you will have to move further. Is it clear to you or not? Correct? So after this particular point, now we shall move over to the next question. And this is pretty strong question. This is pretty strong question and not an easy question. It is, this question is a little bit tough to handle. 6.2, this question has been picked up from your past examination also. And it is not an easy question. Is it clear to you? But we'll take a five minutes of break. And before we proceed further, correct? Just allow me to have a five minutes of break because continuously when you speak, Quite obviously, you tend to get tired also.
So welcome again and sorry for this particular interruption. In fact, it was a required one, honestly speaking. So it's pretty cold out here. I already told you even to hold the pen is very difficult. So 6.2, as I was about to say, and I told you in the beginning itself, as far as intrinsic value of shares method is concerned, lots of questions are being asked on this particular topic. Just pay attention. This is one among them. And it's a pretty tough one. In this question, it is given that F1 Limited agreed to take over F2 Limited on 1-10-2020. Now, there is an entity F1 Limited. It is taking over F2 Limited and the summarized balance sheet of F1 and F2 as at 31st of 3, 2020 is given to you. Now, if you look into the balance sheet, you will find that there is equity share capital of F1 and F2. Remember one, F1 is taking over F2. As far as reserve and surplus or other equity items are concerned, we have two reserves and profit and loss account. Besides that, we have got one liability only creditors. Then total is given. Then property plant and equipment is equal to 15,50,000 and 12,60,000. Then we are being given current asset and current asset, lots of current assets are there, 2,35,500 stock and 3,81,500 again, and then daters, and then bank, and then we have preliminary expenses. Although preliminary expenses are given over here, as we know, preliminary expenses are valueless items. Now you are given some additional information in this particular question. Question says that for the six months period from 1st of April 2020, Remember here, in this particular question, balance sheet of the two companies is given on 1-10-2020. 1-10-2020. And below it is given that for the six months period, that means from 1st April till the date on which the entity was acquired. That means from the beginning of the current year. This entity was not acquired in the beginning of the year. It is acquired on 1st of October 2020. So from the beginning of the year till what we call... 1st of April 2020, it is given F1 Limited and F2 Limited made profits of 5,40,000 and 3,60,000 respectively after writing of depreciation 10% per annum on the fixed asset. We made a profit of 540 and 3,60,000 after writing of depreciation of 10%. What replication it would have, I will let you know in a short while. Both the companies paid on 1st of August 2020 equity dividend of 10%. Both the companies paid equity dividend and just to add salt to the injury, they have also given that dividend tax at 15% was paid by each of them on such payment. So whatever dividend which was paid by these two companies, besides that these two companies also paid dividend tax at the rate of 15%. Now it is given that goodwill of F2 Limited was valued at 1,68,900. In the question, we have already gone through goodwill is not given in the balance sheet. However, when F2 F1 Limited acquired F2 Limited, it valued the goodwill of F2 Limited at 1,68,900 on the date of takeover. On the date of takeover. A stock of F2 Limited was subject to an abnormal item of 8,500 to be fully written off. A stock of F2 Limited. Now, a stock of F2 Limited question states that it contains an abnormal item of 8,500. So, from the value of the stock, I will subtract 8,500. Whatever remaining stock will be there, question says will be appreciated by 20% for the purpose of the taken over. That means in order to compute the value of the stock from 3,81,500, first of all, I am going to subtract the abnormal item 8,500. Whatever remaining item will be there, I will add 20% to it and then we will take it over at that particular value. Further, it is given F1 Limited would issue F2 Limited shareholders fully paid equity shares of 10 each on the basis of the comparative intrinsic value of the shares on the, on the date of the takeover and you are required to. As we can see that this question related to intrinsic value computation, correct number one. And what we are supposed to do, we are supposed to find out the consideration to be transferred to F1. Secondly, to be transferred by F1, sorry, calculate the number of share to be issued by F1 to F2 Limited and then ascertain the closing bank balance which will appear in the balance sheet. 
This time balance sheet is not asked, rather we are being asked actually what is the closing balance. So this is the question, correct interesting question, long question, but not it often. If you want to note, you can. If you want to note, you can. Otherwise, you can simply look over here, correct that is suffice. And then you can look into the solution. And this time I'm not insisting that you should write only just in order to make you understand better 6.2 is the question which i am picking up under the 6.2 question first of all what i did in fact first step first step under the first step i write here increase in profit because it was given in the question that profits of these two entities have increased increase in profit and remember one thing increase in profit always means increase in cash is it clear to you or not do you know why in your earlier level in the very first class when you entered for the commerce journey your madam told that assets in accounts is always equal to liability plus capital suppose at this moment asset is equal to 5 lakh liability is equal to 0 and capital is equal to 5 lakh Suppose I ask you a very innocuous question, rent received 10, rent received, let us say 10. How will you treat it in the counting equation? Because you have received rent, obviously your assets will increase, number one, and your capital will also increase, isn't it or not? That means you are considering this rent as a sort of profit. That is why you are adding it to the capital. So, increase in profit always directly or indirectly means increase in cash. Anyway, first of all, let's come over here. I prepared two columns F1 and F2. Correct? It's almost a 16 mark question. First of all, I write here net profits which were given to us in the question. If you remember, 5,40,000 was given and 3,60,000 was also given to us. 5,40,000 and 3,60,000. Clear? Besides the net profit, it was given that these net profits were after the depreciation. After the depreciation. First, let me add the depreciation. Why we are adding the depreciation? We know that depreciation is a non-cash item, isn't it or not? So, if I will add the depreciation, it will give me my cash profit. As you know, under cash flow statement, you used to do in your earlier phases of education to find out cash from operational activity, you used to add depreciation. Similar logic you will have to apply here. Now depreciation, how I am going to compute? First of all, I will take into account F1. The value of the F1 given in the balance sheet is 15,50,000. And depreciation rate is given 10%. And into 6 by 12. For six months depreciation, I will apply. Correct? So six months depreciation will be equal to 77,500. So 77,500. What will be the depreciation of F2? As far as F2 is concerned in the balance sheet, you can see their value is 12,60,000. And into 10% and into 6 by 12. So that will deliver you the depreciation of this particular entity also. Depreciation of this particular entity will be equal to 63,000. Is it clear to you? Now I am going to add it. It will tell me the increase in cash. Correct? 6,17,500 and 4,23,000. 4,23,000. Increase in profit always means increase in cash. Remember one. Is it clear to you? Under the second step, what I am going to do, second step, see here. Now I will write here cash balance. Cash balance. Correct. Under the cash balance, again F1, F2, of course. Now balance as per balance sheet is given to us. Cash balance as on. 1,40,000. One four two thousand twenty. In the beginning of the year, as per balance sheet, cash balance is three lakh forty thousand and one lakh eighty thousand. And now we know that because profit has increased during these six months from one four two thousand twenty till what we call first of October two thousand twenty, profits have increased by this much. I will add this increase in profit. Increase in profit means increase in cash. Is it clear to you? 
increase in profits I am going to now add. Increase in profits is equal to 6,17,500 and 4,23,000. So this will tell me the balance of cash on the date of takeover. So that will be equal to 9,57,500. 9,57,500 and 6,3,000. Now we have got balance of cash also. Is it clear to you? Now we are in a position. Now we are in a position. But before 9,57,000 in this question, there is also some information with respect to payment of dividend. Correct. So let me also adjust that. So as to find out cash balance, proper cash balance, 6,3,000. Because in this question, it was also given in the question that both the companies have paid some dividend. When the company will pay the dividend, what will happen? Cash will also get reduced. So, less payment of dividend. Less payment of dividend. Now, I will write here payment of dividend. Not only payment of dividend, but payment of dividend and dividend tax also. Dividend tax also. Correct? For that... I will have to look into the share capital of the respective company. When I will look into the share capital of the respective company, as far as F1 Limited is concerned, 20 lakh into 10%. So dividend they have paid equal to 2 lakh. I will subtract 2 lakh. Correct? And they have also paid dividend tax. Dividend tax is paid on the amount of dividend. So amount of dividend happens to be 2 lakh. So 2 lakh into 15%, they must have paid a dividend tax of rupees 30,000. So as far as F1 Limited is concerned, it must have paid a dividend of 2 lakh and dividend tax of what we call 30,000. Now as far as F2 Limited is concerned, its share capital given in the balance sheet is equal to 15 lakh. Now 15 lakh into 15%, sorry, dividend is 10%. I will compute 10% dividend. 10% dividend is equal to 1,50,000. Now dividend tax will be equal to 1,50,000. Dividend tax is always computed on the amount of dividend. Dividend tax is equal to 15%. So 15% of 1,50,000 will be equal to equal to 22,500. So now you are going to subtract these two items from 9,57,500 and 6,3,000 to get what we call balance of cash on the date of acquisition. So that will be equal to 7,27,500 and will be equal to 4,30,500. Now we have the cash balance on the date of acquisition because balance sheet is given to us as on 1,4,2,000. 20 takeover has been done on 110 2020 so quite obviously some change during these six months have taken place and accordingly value will be, have to be adjusted now under step number three i will write intrinsic value of share now we will compute the intrinsic value of share f1 f2 interesting question so first of all you will write here cash balance now cash bank balance you have just computed that is equal to 7,27,500 and that is equal to 4,30,500 correct besides that in the question we are being given property plant and equipment or fixed asset now less depreciation because we have computed the amount of depreciation so you simply subtract it from their respective value. After subtracting from their respective value, you will get 14 lakh something, 14 lakh 72,500. Correct? The value which is appearing in the balance sheet, from that you simply subtract the six months depreciation. Similarly, here also 11 lakh 97,000 will be the value. That is value appearing on 1-4-2010, less six months depreciation. Then we will come across daters. As far as daters, there are no, there is no change. So I will simply write the balance sheet value three lakh forty nine thousand five hundred and two lakh thirty one thousand. Is it clear to you? 
Then besides daters, we are also having in this question stock. As far as stock is concerned, 5,35,000, 5,35,500 worth of stock is given of F1. However, the stock of acquiry company, I told you, first of all, from the value of the stock, which is appearing in the balance sheet, subtract 8,500 and abnormal item was there. After subtracting 8,500, whatever value you, you are getting, now add 20% to it. At this value, you are going to take over the stock. That value will be equal to 4,47,600. Is it clear to you or not? 4,47,600. That value will be equal to 4,47,600. Further in the question, it was also given that when F1 Limited acquired F2 Limited, it valued its goodwill at 1,68,900. Is it clear to you? So, on the date of acquisition, the, this is the situation of the asset. Now, we will subtract the liabilities. There is only one liabilities, fortunately. The liability is in the form of creditors, 85,000 and 75,000. When I will subtract... This value from the total of the asset, we must get net assets equal to, because I know the answers as far as net answers are concerned. So net asset must be, you must make a thorough check also, I keep on telling. 30 lakh should be your net assets and 24 lakh should be your net assets of this entity. Because in this particular question, net assets means assets available for shareholders. No preference share capital is given. Had it been given, I would have subtracted it. That means now we get assets for shareholders. Assets for equity shareholders. Assets for equity shareholders, 30 lakh, 24 lakh. 30 lakh, 24 lakh. Is it clear to you? 34 lakh. 30 lakh and 24 lakh. All you have to do is to now divide it by number of equity share. Now number of equity share, number of equity shares. As far as number of equity shares are concerned, we have already seen that one share is of 10 each. So 20 lakh divided by 10. Number of share will be equal to 2 lakh. 15 lakh divided by 10 will be equal to 1 lakh 50,000. By dividing it, we will get the intrinsic value of share. So one part of the question we have already solved. 15 will be the intrinsic value and then 16 will be the intrinsic value in this particular case. After having computed the intrinsic value, your next step will be amount of consideration. In fact, now we are trying to find out number of shares to be discharged, to be issued. How many shares will be issued by F1 Limited? Number of shares to be issued by F1 Limited. For that, we require consideration. We have already computed the consideration. Consideration is nothing but net assets of F2 Limited. Correct? So I will write the amount of consideration as 24 lakh. And I will divide it by... I will divide it by intrinsic value of share of F1 Limited. Intrinsic value of F1 Limited is 15. Is it clear to you? This is how I will come to know how many shares we are going to issue. So we are going to issue 1,60,000 shares. Of course, of rupees 10 each at the rate of 15. Is it clear to you or not? This is interesting question. This is how you are supposed to do this particular question. Is it clear to you or not? Is it clear? Now suppose if I ask you what is the cash balance. In order to know the cash balance, you simply, in fact, you have already computed cash balance. Here it was, the uh, right. Cash balance is 7,27,500 and 4,30,500 on the date of the acquisition. This is how you are supposed to do this particular question. Anyway, so in the next session, we will meet again and we will again do a tough question. So... Shall meet you in the next session. Hope you must have enjoyed today's session as usual. Looking forward to have your sweet, interesting and fine feedbacks. So on such note, we take leave of you. And 
So, of course, with the news that I would love you to go through the session when the video is uploaded immediately because any at any point of time now video can be taken off. So, be careful next time and no request will be accepted in that regard. So, on such count, we take leave of you and a very lovely good night.